Welcome to this mini webinars about SARS-CoV-2 specific B cells and therapeutic antibody discovery. First, I would like to give you a short background about the role of B cells in COVID-19. In general, it is important to study the immune response to viral infections. And indeed, all the immune cells can have a role in the disease's outcome and also in the clearance. And some, like for example, macrophages in general myeloid cells, um, might have a negative role in a pathogenesis of diseases and can be studied to target, uh, to target them with drugs that can be used to treat patients in acute phase or severe phase in the case, for example, COVID-19. Other cells like uh, lymphocytes uh, play uh, a key role in the defense against the, the infection and also um, in the mounting of the so-called immunological memory, which gives uh, protections from future infections. And of course, the goal of vaccinations against SARS-CoV-2, as well as for many other vaccinations, is to develop an immune response that has memory. And therefore, measuring SARS-CoV-2 specific T cells and SARS-CoV-2 specific B cells in vaccinated individuals is a very important step in the evaluation of efficacy of COVID-19 vaccine. But <clears throat> which are the differences between uh, T cells and B cells? So the most important difference is that uh, the T cells via the T cell receptor TCR recognize antigens bound on the MHC of infected cells. On the contrary, B cells via the B cell receptor <clears throat> can uh, recognize antigens or a full pathogen present in the microenvironment without the need of a presentation uh, from another cell or even infection of another cell. Once the B cell recognizes specific antigen, develops into a plasma cell. And the B cell receptor is basically an antibody. Uh, and after development, the plasma cells secrete these antibodies in the microenvironment and can eliminate the pathogens in several ways. Since the antibodies eliminate the pathogens uh, before cells get infected, this response is called sterile immunity and is usually the target of a vaccination. Um, antibodies can eliminate the pathogens in several ways. The most simple way is the neutralization, as you can see here on the left. In the case of SARS-CoV-2, for example, some antibodies recognize the protein spike um, that is present on the surface of the virus and block its binding to the ACE2 protein on, uh, on the human cells, preventing therefore the virus to infect the cells and therefore protecting us against the, the infection. Uh, but there are also other ways uh, antibodies can help uh, the immune system to kill pathogens um, or also tumor cells, for example. Uh, they can, for example, activate a complement or recruit uh, killer cells such as uh, NK cells uh, or macrophages. And as we can see later um, about therapeutic antibodies, uh, a good antibody should be able to induce one or more of these mechanisms and it's very important also to test the functionality. We have seen basically how a strong antibody response per se should be able to control a viral infection like SARS-CoV-2, for example. However, it was observed last year in several individuals that have developed uh, the, uh, the disease that the level of antibodies uh, went down over several months uh, after infection. And therefore, these individuals uh, were still susceptible to infection and uh, to future infection with SARS-CoV-2 and development of COVID-19. However, recent studies have shown and proved that B cells persist in the blood of these individuals and even convalescent after eight months show the presence of the cells. Therefore, the B cells could prevent future infection or at least help the individual to clear the infection quickly without development of COVID-19. So we have now seen how measuring B cells in the blood of infected and vaccinated individual um, is very important, but how can you measure SARS-CoV-2 specific B cells? Um, in the past 12 months, at military biotech, we have developed several recombinant uh, protein 
um, uh, uh, resembling the SARS-CoV-2 protein, as you can see here in uh, our list. And all proteins are manufactured in a recombinant eukaryotic system that reproduce the glycosylation, and therefore they are uh, immunogenic and can be recognized by antibodies. Um, and the oldest protein have been produced uh, with or without a biotin uh, covalently conjugated. So most of our tools uh, uh, that have been developed uh, to recognize uh, antigen to, to, to detect antigen specific B cells um, uh, have been developed using uh, the spike protein, uh, the monomer here, or the receptor binding domain, which is basically the part of the spike protein that mediates uh, the uh, binding to the ACE2 receptor. It, therefore, it's very important for immunogenicity and for the functionality of the vaccine. Um, so how does uh, this system work? So first of all, you need to create tetramers using this simple protocol. Basically, you have one streptavidin conjugated to a fluorochrome, for example, PE, that binds four biotin-related protein uh, by a short incubation at room temperature. Uh, in this case, it can be spike or RBD. Uh, once you create the tetramers, the bounding is really strong, it's almost like covalent. Then you can add it in a solution in suspension of B cells. And the BCR of the B cell, specific for a spike protein or RBD protein, um, can then uh, bind the protein on the tetramer. And therefore, since the, the, the tetramer has a disconjugation to a, to a P or to another fluorochrome, it's possible to detect uh, the cells via flow cytometry. So all our experiments have started from a pre-enriched population of uh, B cells. Um, using a releasable system um, that, we, um, that we sell that is called uh, Realize, in this case, Realize CD90 microbit kit. In this way, um, basically all the cells are uh, label free after the enrichment. And uh, once the cells are available and pre rich you can uh, stain them with a the tetramer and other antibodies, and then proceed to the flow cytometry uh, measurement, or eventually to the sorting. Uh, on the other hand, it's also possible to use anti-P microbits to um, select uh, these cells and then uh, enrich them with uh, uh, magnetic separation. But it's also possible to stain directly PBMC. So we have basically protocol for both options. Um, we use two tetramers. Uh, in two different colors for the same antigen. This is a, in a way, basically, to detect antigen-specific B cells uh, by getting on the diagonal and exclude unspecific cells. And here you can also see uh, our recommended panel that includes also the CD27 to distinguish uh, um, memory versus naive B cells, and also uh, the isotype IgG, IgA, and IgM. As you can see here, we have been able to detect antigen-specific, so spike-specific B cells in convalescent individual, but not in the healthy control. Also, uh, as mentioned, the same panel can be used for sorting. And here we use our max uh, quantitative cell sorter. Um, and as you can see, you can obtain a very high purity <clears throat> of antigen-specific B cells, spike-specific B cells in this case, uh, and also very good uh, recovery. The um, max quantito um, is a perfect system to sort actually in safety these fragile and rare cells uh, because um, it's a system based on a microchip, on a closed um, uh, sorting that is not done uh, with aerosol and therefore is really perfect to sort uh, patient material and has been used in many uh, studies on SARS-CoV-2 um, last year, especially when treating with uh, in infected um, individuals. And it's also sterile, of course, and disposable, and very gentle to cells that is important when working on B cells. Um, very importantly, after sorting the cells, uh, we have put them in culture with our um, uh, B cell expansion kit that contains CD40 ligand multimers and IL-4. 
and then helps a polyclonal expansion of the cells. So the spike positive cells that we have first previously sorted expanded nicely after 14 days, and also um, they also produce anti uh, ang IgG antibodies anti spike. Uh, proving that the cells isolated were indeed the spike specific and very functional. It can therefore be used then for generation of antibodies in culture. Alternatively to the sorting, it's also possible to do magnetic enrichment of SARS-CoV-2 B cells um, by using tetramer conjugation with PE uh, and then an anti-P microbits and go to our um, magnetic separation into the column. As you can see from the data, you can have a very nice uh, 40 times fold enrichment uh, of uh, spike specific B cells or RBD specific B cells. And uh, um, from the 1st of April, it is now possible to get all the reagents needed for this protocol and also um, a, the, the protocol written in the data sheet um, for a very convenient uh, uh, system uh, based on the skits. Uh, that are called SARS-CoV-2 uh, B-cell analysis kit and SARS-CoV-2 uh, B-cell microbit kit, and they are available both for the spike or for the RBD detection. And now to conclude, we'd like to give you an overview on therapeutic antibody discovery, which is very important for SARS-CoV-2, but also for other diseases like, for example, cancer. So in order to develop therapeutic antibodies, uh, um, it, uh, it is important to follow these different steps. So you have first an antibody discovery, uh, then you need to uh, produce the antibody, and then you need to functionally test them. After you have functionally test them, you are engineering the antibody to improve them. Um, then you um, have to select your best candidate, and then finally you have a product that you can basically uh, put in, in, uh, in, in, uh, in the market. Um, now, how do you start the whole process? Um, to discover the antibody, you need a source of material. This can be either from human or from animal models. In the case of human, you might start from immunized individuals, also naturally exposed, like in the case of COVID-19. In, in animals, you might start from also vaccinated, immunized individuals, or from animal models that develop a certain disease like cancer. But alternatively, you can also start from library of synthetic genes. And um, uh, how do you basically uh, develop and, and isolate the, the, the antibodies? So the whole point is that you need to start from B cells, as I showed in the beginning, antigen specific B cells. So you start from a certain material, it can be either a solid tumor or another tissue, or, a, or blood. In the case of solid tumor, what we recommend is a, is a sample preparation based on dissociation of the, of the tumor. That can be done with a gentle MAC dissociator and also our dissociation kit that contain a specific enzyme that preserve the epitopes but uh, give you a nice cell suspension. Uh, in case of starting from blood instead, what we recommend are the stray from product. It means that you have to can skip the cycle and go directly to get B cells uh, from whole blood, buffy coat, leucopac, or LRCs. Uh, alternatively, if you want to run first the cycle, then you could use our kits as designed for PBMC. For example, the palm B cell isolation kit, or as I showed you before, the real CD90 microbit kit that gives you uh, a pure CD90 population with high recovery at label three for further um, detection. Then, as I showed you before, there are many ways you could directly isolate antigen-specific B cells, for example, as I show you with SARS-CoV-2 uh, specific B cells. Then you go uh, to analysis and you can eventually expand the cells. As I showed you before, we have several products, including the B cell expansion kit, but also cytokines and TLR ligands that help that. And finally, uh, the MAX1 title can be a perfect uh, tool for isolation of fragile and rare cells. Um, uh, as well as, of course, uh, um, the antibodies needed for uh, the detection. And finally, once you have uh, defined your antibody and produced it, uh, then you need to, uh, the, to test it. And uh, I don't have time to go now in the detail, but you will basically um, um, be able to, uh, to use several of our products also for detection of functionality of the antibodies, as I showed you at the beginning, for example, ADCC or MLR. Uh, system uh, using NK cells or uh, monocyte derived dendritic cells. <clears throat> um, 
Unfortunately, we are now at the end of this session, and uh, as you know, the scope of immuno pills is just to give you some suggestions and a general overview. But we will be really happy to answer your questions and also provide you more material to dive deeper into these topics. Uh, so you can check, of course, with us, our local representative, or on our website. There are several pages, like protocol pages, more webinars, and also tool and material like uh, different uh, um, posters and scientific posters and brochure that can help you to navigate through our tools uh, and solutions. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>